Hi guys, hi everyone that's tuning in. We are just going to quickly check and make sure we are actually live before we get into all the fun stuff we're going to talk about today. Um, let's just make sure we are going on both Facebook and Instagram. All right on. One second. Yeah. Um, so if you are tuning in, we are going to talk about some fun stuff regarding Arts for Sight and the Giving Tuesday fundraiser. It looks like we are good to go on Facebook and we are almost there on Instagram. Let's just double check Instagram. I'm not seeing a... a, a then come through. Ah, there we are. We are, are live on Instagram. Instagram. Okay, sorry. Let me just chew. <laughs> Turn off that volume. So that being said, yeah. I would love to introduce the lovely Joseph and Raquel. Joseph, take it away. Thank you, Annalie. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome, um, Facebook viewers, Instagram viewers. My name is uh, Joseph Burton. I'm the president and founder um, of the Hearts for Sight Foundation, and I'm accompanied here by my good friend, Raquel. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Raquel Desipeta, and I am the co-founder and assistant director of programs of Hearts for Sight. Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Hi, guys. We're super excited to be here. So, Joseph, give us a second. Uh, tell everybody just, like, what this life is about. What are we yeah. going to talk about today and some exciting Absolutely. things? Absolutely. So, we have a wonderful, wonderful organization, <laughs> Hearts for Sight Foundation, where we serve the health and wellness needs of people with vision loss. Um, today, we are going to be talking about our programs, the impact that we have in our community, and we're hoping to tap into our networks, um, our social media platforms to um, <coughs> support uh, for our programs and services. Today is Giving Tuesday. Um, it is the largest uh, single day of giving. And so we are here today hoping that we can have your support for our adaptive fitness programs. And so with that, um, you know, we have a we have a little short little program. We're excited to share more. Amazing, amazing. Well, there's a few people jumping on live. Right on. Uh, let's say hi to on Instagram. We are seeing Gloria. Hi, Gloria. And we're Jess is there. Hi, Jess. Say, let us know, guys, where you're tuning in from. We'd love to say hi to you. And by the way, this is your opportunity right now to ask questions. If you are new to the community or maybe you've been part of this community, HFS in the past, um, you wanna know more about it, this is the time to ask those questions. Uh, so feel free to ask them on Facebook, feel free to check in on Instagram. And by the way, if we miss your questions, we promise we will come back and answer them. Absolutely. And we'd also like to add, if you've been uh, a part of our Heart for Sight family, if participated in any of our event or activities, Throw us a comment. Let us know what your experiences were like, because we'd love to be able to share that um, with others who might not know anything about the work that we do. So if you've participated in anything that we do, show us some love. Throw us a comment. Send us a like or two. Um, yeah, that will just help folks who don't know about us um, learn a little bit more. Amazing, amazing. All righty. So let's just quickly check before we continue um, if there's any people having questions right now or anyone checking in. It looks like we are good to go, Joseph. All right. So should we uh, go ahead and start with, oh, well, again, we want to remind everybody, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to um, ask those questions. Annalie is here. She is scouting for all of the responses. So um, just don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. Um, this is uh, Giving Tuesday today, and we are happy to share a little bit more about um, our programs, the impact that we have in our community. So um, if you're tuning in, again, from wherever you are, please let us know. We'd love to know where you're tuning in from. Um, but welcome. Uh, we have our first um, 
order of, I guess, sharing business, I suppose. Um, but uh, should we go ahead and chat about the beginning of our yeah, yeah, yeah. journey? So, oh, that sound yeah, good? I think, you do that, I think you should introduce Annalie. Who is Annalie? Yeah. <laughs> right. This random person that's this just random here in the person back. is helping us, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, let's go ahead and do that. So Anna Lee has been instrumental in helping Hartford Sight sort of reestablish our social image. And so if you've been seeing our likes or you've been seeing our social medias, you've been seeing that we've been putting out a lot of content highlighting the work that we do with our adaptive fitness programs, our mental health services. Um, highlighting our hikes, our bike rides, our yoga activities, our appreciation posts that we put out every Friday. Anna Lee is the brains behind all of that work. She is the owner and founder of Y Digital, and uh, she's also helping us sort of facilitate this conversation. So, Anna Lee, you want to say hi and just, you know, say a little something about the work that we've been doing? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for the great introduction. Um, hi, everyone. I am Anneli, as, as Joseph has just said. I am the owner of Y Digital Ad Boutique, and it's been such a pleasure working with Joseph. I met him through a friend, um, Jason, who I believe is also popping up on here any moment now. But uh, we are fellow South Africans, and uh, Jason is a good friend of mine, and uh, he invited myself and my husband to one of your hikes. It was, I think, in the beginning of October. And I just love what you guys are doing with uh, helping your community and helping uh, facilitate more accessible fitness opportunity. I am a fitness junkie myself. So, and when I heard both your stories, both you or and Raquel's story, I fell in love with it and I knew I wanted to be a part of it. So, um, you know, you kind of kind of have to share your expert, wherever you're an expert in, in this world, like share that um ability with other people and make this world a better place and i can help with the social part so that's that's kind of my role here um i just so everybody know again for those who just jumped on i uh will definitely interrupt joseph and raquel with your questions with regards to um anything you want to know about hearts first sight their mission giving tuesday um but through this life we're going to discuss a lot of this stuff and then that being said, I would love to get to um, give other people the opportunity to, to get to know both you guys. Because when I got to know you, that's when um, that what what really kind of attracted me to you guys is to 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 hear your story. So Joseph, why don't you kick it off and and tell us a yeah. little bit about just when um your entire experience with um rp what rp stands for uh you guys educated me a lot um with uh, <laughs> visual impairment and and yeah. i didn't know and i know there's a lot of excited folks out there that would love to also understand um the entire process a little better and kind of the challenges you guys faced right right well thank you yeah i i love to share so um you know, for those who um, know me on Facebook, friends and family, um, they they would know that I'm a low vision, uh, visually impaired person. Um, as Annalie mentioned, I have retinitis pigmentosa, also known as RP. And I was diagnosed with uh, retinitis pigmentosa when I was 16 um, years old. And um, I grew up in foster care and I was... When I was 16, um, I I went into an eye specialist, um, and I found out that I had some weird stuff happening with my with my eyes that the doctors could not identify. And so um, I went to a specialist down in San Diego, which is where I'm from. And um, at the specialist, they mentioned that I have this condition um, that is at the time was very, very rare. One in every, I think, 5,000 folks actually have this disease. And um, this disease leads to eventual uh, blindness, eventually at least a total blindness for some. And um, hearing that at age 16, just being in the foster care system, that was this devastating news to hear. Like I was an mm -hmm. athlete, I was very, very active. Um, and then to be told, like, by the time you turn 21, that 
you can prepare to be, you know, blind. That is was not something that I was definitely no, trying. That's to not hear. something you want to. <laughs> not something that I was trying to hear at all. So, um, but yeah, so I I was diagnosed at sixteen. I continued to live my life um, knowing that eventually I'd uh, be blind um, one day. Um, and around 23, 24, um, I noticed that my health really started to deteriorate. Um, folks in San Diego know me as Bubba, and <laughs> Bubba was always a very big, very large um, person who didn't exercise very much and didn't really have great eating habits. And so yeah. um, I noticed when uh, I was much larger, my eyesight was getting a lot worse very, very quickly. And so I just decided to make a conscious decision that, hey, if I'm going to be a visually impaired person, I do not want to be obese. I do not want to yeah. be an obese blind guy. Um, and so I took uh, my health um, I try to take control of my health and decided, hey, this is something that I can't control. I can control exercising. I can control the things that I'm putting into my body. Um, and then I started just, just working out. I started to exercise pretty regularly, and I started implementing uh, more nutritious um, habits, um, restructuring my, my diet. And over the course of, I'd say, about 14 months, I lost over 100 pounds. Um, and at that time, like my, I noticed that my eyes were starting to not fluctuate as much. I was much, much lighter, especially on my feet. I had a yeah. tremendous amount of energy and you know what? I was motivated to, um, try to help others, not only help myself, but try to help others. And so, yeah. um, I went to, uh, the Braille Institute for folks in our visually impaired community, uh, the Braille Institute is a organization that helps uh, people with visual impairments with an array <laughs> of different kinds of services. And so I tapped into the Braille Institute down in San Diego, and that's where I got to learn a little bit more about the blind and visually impaired community, as well as some of the challenges um, we face when it comes to accessing our health and our well-being. And so yeah, after yeah, volunteering yeah. there for a couple of years, um, I, uh, after volunteering for a couple of years, I developed a couple programs, like a health and wellness program, a nutrition program down at Braille. And I decided, you know, I want to make more of an impact um, in our community. And I want to figure out how can we address the health, the well-being um, of folks who have vision loss, because I noticed that there were no services available that really address those fundamental challenges that we experience as a community. And so after working with uh, the Braille and um, getting tapped into other organizations like the National Federation um, for the Blind, um, you know, I started to meet more people and in those networking opportunities, I came across this very good friend of mine, Raquel, and um, started talking to Raquel about this idea that I had to bring health and wellness to the blind community. And I think, Raquel, this would be a good time to bring you into this conversation, right? Because I'm sure you remember the first time we met and the conversations that we were having about how to create sort of a program um, to address the health and wellness needs of our community. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. Um, uh, when was it? Uh, I think it was like a couple of months into, um, after we met, that's when we started talking about um, creating a program for uh, health and wellness. Um, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. <clears throat> um, so anyway, I I guess I should introduce myself as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Raquel. Um, yeah, before you like talk a yeah, little bit so, before you get um, to to um, uh, the the how you guys met and um, kind of where your vision started with HFS. Um, tell us a little bit, just a bit. Okay, give people a little bit of background about your experience, your diagnosis, and kind of just the process that you went through, the barriers that you faced. Yeah. Um, yes. 
You have a very unique story, Raquel. So we want to hear that story. <laughs> yes, thank you. So, yeah, um, I also have retinitis pigmentosa, just like Joseph. Um, I was diagnosed with this um, disorder or with this eye disease. I, I think I was four, actually. But um, when I was younger, I could still see until a uh, until I was uh, 15. Um, mm -hmm. And this is way back in the Philippines. Um, and uh, I believe I was 13 years old when I was told by my eye doctor um, that eventually I will become blind. Um, mm -hmm. With you, Joseph, they told you you will become blind at 21. Mine uh, at 13, they told me I will become blind at 18. So, um, you know, as you could imagine, uh, a teenage girl <laughs> hearing that, you know, I will become blind eventually. Oh, my God. You know, my world really fell apart. Came, came um, crashing down. Huh? Yeah. I mean, you know, I was already experiencing um, visual impairment um, when I was young. I couldn't understand what was really happening. Um, for those who are not very familiar with RP, the very first thing it, that you lose is your um, your sight at night. So you 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 become blind at night, and uh, that you know when I was a kid, I couldn't understand why I couldn't play outside <laughs> with mm. with other kids because I couldn't see um, very well. Um, but you know, life went. On, I just you know went on going to school. Uh, like I said, during the day I have enough sight to see, to, to, to see the blackboard, to see you know uh, people's faces, colors, and etc. Um, until I turned 15, and that's when uh, my eyesight started really deteriorating. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but even though that started happening, I. I think I was 16 when I went to the School for the Blind in the Philippines and I learned um, Braille. I learned how to read and write Braille. Um, when, uh, when that happened, I, I met a lot of people who are also visually impaired like me. And that's when my life turned around. That's when I, I started, um, uh, how do you say, I started realizing that, hey, it is okay to be blind. Um, mm. um, it is okay. Uh, there's still life after <laughs> being blind. Because by that time, uh, I was 16. It, it's it's really starting to really deteriorate. And so, mm. um, uh, so yeah. It let me well fast forward. <laughs> um, you know, we came to America, and um, after several years. I became so active with um, organizations like National Federation of the Blind. Um, in the, I have got, you know, I've been involved with all kinds of, of activities with the San Fernando Valley chapter, had led a few um, committees in our chapter and developed my uh, leadership skills there. In um, one year, uh, what was it, 2014, um, October, when we had the the uh, state convention, the NFP had a state convention here in the Los Angeles area. That's where I met Joseph. Mm. <laughs> um, actually, I remember um, Joseph was sitting behind us at another table, and um, so my friend and I were t were waiting there um, for the managers. I forgot what it's what's the event called. It was actually, you know, the hotel was providing free drinks. And we were all around <laughs> in, the, in the restaurant waiting for the for them to serve drinks, and we were you know we heard Joseph and um, for whatever reason they started you know the, uh, he and his friend came over to our table and we started talking and and we became fast friends since then um, and then uh, t maybe two months after we started talking we started you know. Um, hanging out. That's when he told me about his idea. And so for me, because um, I was, you know, blind longer than 
he is. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was so attracted with the idea because um, it's something that I've been looking for for many years. Um, you know, uh, I've always wanted to be able to do things independently. Um, and that's what I always, you know, that's what I do with, with everything. And um, one thing, though, that is um, I am not able to do independently is going to the gym. Yeah, um, yeah. Participating with uh, uh, fitness activities like yoga, Zumba, stuff like that. And so when Joseph brought up that idea to me, I was like, oh, wow, really? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> um, I'm I personally looking for something like that. You know, how are we going to do that? Let's let's start, um, you know, researching and doing that. And so, um, so yeah, uh, after a few months, um, in 2015, that's when he and I started researching, uh, you know, what we need to do to, uh, yeah. to organize an organization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of a perfect segue into um hearts for sight and what you guys are doing with hearts for sight and what the plans are but before we get to that let's check in with this amazing community we have a ton of people on facebook and instagram saying hi so i will go from the top rolando and richard april alma they are all saying hi and checking in well, hi um, back to everyone. Hi, hi back. Shout, out. shout outs to you both and to Hearts for Sight. Gloria says hello from Carson, California. Looking forward to participating in some of your hello. activities in the new future. Um, Carson's in the house. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Lenny Don't says hello, Raquel and Joseph uh, from San Diego. Um, and Hi. from Willie from San Diego and Lenny from Barcelona. Hmm. Oh, right on. Barcelona. Uh, people from like different Heart places. Society. I love Heart it. Society is international now. Love it. Yes. Yeah. You know, those two names, April and Alma, they're from the Philippines. I know them. Awesome. <laughs> oh, Hi, guys. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for everybody that's tuning in. Um, Joseph, for the people that have maybe just hopped on or yeah. um, throughout yep. this first 20 minutes, uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Do you want to quickly just let them know what today yeah. is about, yeah. where to find their links in Absolutely. the and all of that? So for those who just jumped on, you are tuned in to the Heart for Sight Foundation's uh, Giving Tuesday um live event we're live on facebook we're live on instagram um you are chatting with um or hearing us chat um my name is joseph burren i'm the president and founder of heart for sight i'm here with uh my good friend raquel disapita who's also the co-founder and director of uh assistant director of programs and also the board uh, secretary. Secretary. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I have all kinds of role in this organization. <laughs> she does indeed. She keeps us well, well organized. So you're tuned in. This is the Giving Tuesday um, sort of uh, address. We are looking for support for our adaptive fitness programs, which we'll touch on in a bit. Um, but if you're live with us, thank you for being here. If you can't make it, um, no worries, right, Emily? This is being recorded, so you could definitely check in and um, support us uh, or watch later. Uh, if you'd like to make a uh, contribution or support us, um, we have our uh, donation links, right, in our Facebook um, comments, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So I literally just um, commented. I, I posted the fun Facebook fundraiser link, yeah. as well as the Hearts for Sight fundraising link. Depending on where people feel most comfortable in donating, whether it's via Facebook or via directly your website, they have options sure. there. Absolutely, and then, and then we also have it on Instagram, right? And Instagram yeah. is in our bio, so Instagram's a little different than Facebook, so we can't necessarily put any links up. But if you go to the Hearts for Sight page. Check out our bio. You'll see a hyperlink that goes directly to our donation landing page. So please do check us out. If you love the work that we do, if you want to see more health and wellness supports for the blind and visually impaired community, 
um, go ahead and help us out. We love and appreciate all the support that we can get. Without your support, Heart for Sight would not be possible. So thank you all who have already supported us. We have a number of donors, and we're looking for more because hashtag 5K for HFS, right? That's what we're shooting yeah. for. Yes. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, since that, uh, before we before we jump into kind of parts for side of activities and what all the wonderful, amazing things you guys are gonna mm -hmm. do with your with um, when we reach this goal, uh, let's uh, just a, a a question, frequently quite asked question that a lot of people usually ask. I've seen it a lot on some of our Facebook, um, our mm -hmm. social post so some people would love to know how do they stay in the know about future events um, how do they get information absolutely yeah. i love to answer that or let me okay, answer that ahead. and then Ra raquel you can fill in uh, where sure. where, I'm, where i slip where i stumble you can pick me back up okay uh, oh, yes. so annalee you do a fantastic job our social media expert really helps us um with posting all of our activities, all of our events. So if you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, you're already in the know because we post something almost what seems like every single day. So that's one way to stay connected <laughs> with- much every day. Right, right. That's one way to stay connected to, to the work that we're doing. Um, but I'd say the best, the best, best way to stay connected is to sign up for our newsletter. Um, Raquel, myself, and um, another um, Hearth for Sight volunteer, Mary Yu. I'm sure she'll be jumping on um, pretty soon, or if not, a little bit later. But Mary Yu um, is the person who puts together our beautiful newsletters. Um, and we highlight all the work that we're doing, but we also articulate all of the events and activities that are to come the following month. So I'd say, Email us at um, heartsforsight at gmail.com. I'll spell that phonetically for those who are um, just viewing. That is H-E-A-R-T-S, number four, site, S-I-G-H-T, at gmail.com. Um, so email us there, sign up for our newsletter, and that is the best, best way um, to stay connected with us. Annalie, would you mind popping that into the chat for folks too? So maybe they can copy it and uh, reach out to us at their convenience. Yeah, I also, thank you, Joseph. I also um, added the register for the newsletter link as mm -hmm. well in the comments. So if, if they want to click on there and they can just fill out the form on the website to get registered. Otherwise, Absolutely. if they obviously find it easier to um, email heartforsight at gmail.com. I will post yep. that in the um, and then, comment section as well. And then Raquel, let's go ahead and have Raquel, because she's the one who organizes the programs. And so Raquel, let's go ahead and throw your number in there. So for folks who are more comfortable just giving us a call, they have your yes. contact information and then they could reach you and get more information. You want to go ahead and share? Yes. So if for those people who are uh, who feel more comfortable talking and asking questions or signing up with our activities, um, <clears throat> uh, you can call us at 818-457-1482. Again, that's 818-457-1482. I am the one who will answer those those calls. So, um, and you can also send a text message if, uh, for whatever reason, I did not, um, I wasn't able to pick up your call at the time that you called. So, yeah. Anytime Absolutely. we have activities and events, um, we always request people to send out, to send us an email to RSVP or to make a you know call us at that number. Definitely, definitely. We want folks to reach out because we're going to be talking about some of the work that we're doing in 2022. We have a wonderful year ahead of us. So um, definitely yes. want to check us out, um, sign up to any one of our events and activities because I like to think we're making a pretty significant impact in our community and we love to, we love to grow our impact and we like to grow our, our community base. So Definitely yeah. tune in and check us out. 
Yeah, especially this last couple of years, I, I know for sure that we've been growing. A lot of people have been learning about us and joining us in, in um, our activities. Thank you so much to all of you. All right. Amazing. Us. So just before we continue to getting into Hearts for Sight and all the juicy details, uh, just mm -hmm. one more reminder, guys, if you um, the whole goal for today is to not just tell you guys more about HFS, but to raise some funds for HFS of all the amazing yeah. activities, which we're going to share with you guys a lot more in a second. But the whole goal with Giving Tuesday is to raise funds. Right. So we want to see donations if you um if, if only if you can share this link, if you can share this live, if you can share the fundraiser link, that helps a lot um, and let us help, help us uh, reach that $5,000 goal. So that being Absolutely. said, Absolutely. Um, let's get into HFS. Let's talk about, so for everyone, I know there's a lot of people that already know about Hearts for Sight, but for everyone who doesn't know about Hearts for Sight, Joseph Raquel, what is... Give us a, a summary, whoever wants to go first, into oh, yeah. what your um, ultimate goal is and Raquel, what go you ahead. want to achieve. Let's have Raquel yes. go ahead and share because we do so many presentations, right, Raquel? You've become an expert <laughs> with uh, this part of this question. So let's go ahead and have you share now, right? and then I'll fill in. Yeah, go ahead. So, yes. So, Hearts First Sight is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, dedicated to empowering the blind and visually impaired persons or people um, and pursuing their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Um, we have um, eco-therapeutic uh, opportunities like biking, hiking, yoga, and other opportunities outdoors. And... Um, uh, like we mentioned before, this is founded by Joseph Burton and myself. Uh, our organization was founded or we, we got our 501c3 in 2016. And um, at Heart for Sight, we foster um, psychosocial well-being uh, through clinical services uh, provided by visually impaired um, to support visually impaired persons and um, those clinical services uh, are uh, peer support groups, um, individual uh, therapy, and we have a specialized called acceptance and commitment therapy. Um, and um, at Heart for Sight, our ultimate mission, our ultimate goal is to have a wellness center. Um, where people who are visually impaired and blind know that they can come to this center where um, uh, they can, um, sorry, Joseph, pick it up. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's okay, don't worry. Well, you're doing, you're doing great, but the <laughs> ultimate goal is to establish that accessible health and wellness center. And this is a center that will be equipped with, of course, accessible equipment because what's a gym space that is un inaccessible. Um, we experience that regularly when we go to uh, regular gyms and we'll touch about those experience. Raquel has some pretty mm -hmm. experience when it comes to going to gym spaces, but we are, our ultimate goal is to create the Heart for Sight Wellness Center that is equipped with an accessible gym that is universally designed so that members of our community can access you know, health services, but do it in a way that is un, un, what, do it in a way that has no barriers, um, mm -hmm. where they can work with professional staff who are trained and have competency in working with people with visual impairments. I myself, I'm a certified personal trainer. I've worked with a number of visually impaired people and helping them reach their um, personal health and wellness goals. Um, and so we're looking to, including Raquel, and we're looking to just continue to support individuals, but do it in a, do it at a, um, at a facility that is known to, that is known within the community um, to facilitate exercise services, as well as the psychosocial services and the eco-therapeutic services. And Raquel, you did mention eco-therapeutic. So 
folks are probably wondering mm -hmm. what are ecotherapeutic activities, right? Like, what does that mean? Some fancy I like- I was about to ask, you guys need to explain <laughs> this one. We need to explain that. So it's, it's one thing to go out and be in the community and exercise because it does a number of things for us. It allows us to first get the physical exercise that we need, um, but it also allows us to be in nature um, it allows us to be in outdoor spaces. And a lot of us know the impact that being in outdoor spaces and nature has on our physical and our mental health. For example, we mm -hmm. recently just went to Malibu Creek um, where we had, I believe, yes. a total of 46 participants mm -hmm. and members of the community and yeah. volunteers uh, meet us at Malibu Creek to enjoy a, a guided hike. We had two docents, two wonderful docents there, um, sharing about the lands, um, sharing a little bit more about the terrain, sharing more about the, the wildlife. Um, and of course, it's an opportunity for us to exercise, but it's also an opportunity mm -hmm. for us to be in community with one another. Um, if you are familiar with the blind community, you'll know that a lot of us are sometimes isolated. Um, not because we want to be isolated. I don't think anybody wants to be isolated. But a lot of times the natural environments or the built environment is not suitable for people in our community to be able to access independently or safely. And so our hikes create a beautiful opportunity for people to go out and explore nature but also be in community with one another. Again, our mm -hmm. bike rides are similar, right, Raquel? Our bike rides are a way for us to exercise, um, join each other yes. on a bike, communicate, learn from one another, um, and again, just grow grow our community. Yes, and- Yeah, and, Raquel, and I think this bike... is- a... Sorry, oh, go sorry. ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, no, Raquel. No, go ahead. So yeah, so the, so uh, our bike rides, we get on uh, what they call Surrey bikes. In um, this is sponsored by um, a wonderful company called Wilfund Rental. Um, mm -hmm. They have been sponsoring our bike rides. In um, <clears throat> in so you know, for those who are not familiar, what a Surrey bike is, this is a bike where, well, it looks like a golf cart, <laughs> and you know, uh, four four to six people or even more, um, there are some bikes that are a little bit bigger as well, but four to six people, at least with our group, four to six adults can be on this bike and you are all pedaling together um, and you are all exercising. So that's the fun part that, you know, um, you you will definitely um, sweat <laughs> and, uh, and be tired, you know, by the end of the ride. <laughs> Raquel, yeah. so yeah. Um, speaking of the Surrey bikes, I think one thing for someone sighted like me that we don't understand uh -huh. is mm -hmm. necessarily how much our sight helps us with balance and, um, yes. you know, not being afraid. So how does, what, what does the Surrey bike event do for you specifically? Like, how does it feel being part, like uh, exercising, but having that safety kind of barrier as well? Yeah, for me, uh, you know, the like I said, it because it's um, it has four people on the bike, mm. so um, uh, at least there, you know, you know that you're not gonna fall off. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the Surrey bikes is guided by one sided captain. We call them captain, and we are all um, what are we stokers? Well, mm -hmm. not really. participants. <laughs> I uh, guess that's a thing. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but um, so yes, we we ride together, um, and it's it's really fun because you know you have this opportunity to be outdoor. And you have this opportunity also to be with other people, enjoying the same thing. Mm. I think that's, you know, that's really what it is uh, with our bike rides and even with our hikes, you know. Um, our hikes and our bike rides, we always have volunteers, sighted volunteers helping us. Mm. Um, with mm. our hikes, we, um, we get one sighted volunteer per person, per one visually impaired person. And, um, uh, you know, and we all walk together, 
we always have a lead and someone in the back um, to make sure that we're all together. Nobody's going to be left behind. If one stops, mm -hmm. everybody would have to stop. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, the, the fun part, you know, the fun thing about that is, like I said, you know, just you being outdoors, um, not too many opportunities. Like for me, I, because I have very limited vision, um, it is very difficult for me to be to go out to just mm. do things just like that to to be in nature um you know if i want to go bike riding or if i want to go um hiking i have to ask someone like joseph hey hey joseph you know can we go bike riding <laughs> yeah so, yeah you know and and that's something that um maybe you know some people some sighted people won't understand um, you cannot just simply go to a place and and be there, and then also mm -hmm. you know going to a place. There's a lot of things to you know to consider because one is you have to um, uh, set up your transportation. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of hiking trails they're not um, accessible with um, uh, from the bus, you know, uh, public transportation. So yeah, um, yeah. So you have to arrange transportation, um, and then, like I said, you know, I I don't feel safe, you know, going to places like that. So that's that's the the thing about heart for sight activities. And um, I know that a lot of people who have been joining us, they have been really, you know, happy to hear about these programs because, you know, we we really encourage we we promote um uh, being outdoor and and um being with nature mm -hmm. yeah right? yeah so yeah. so so speaking of volunteers you guys talked a lot about the volunteers so for people who want to volunteer um obviously without without uh, the obvious reaching out to you guys via email or, or call to to find out more about volunteering opportunities but joseph can you just quickly let yeah. people know like you don't have to be an expert to be a volunteer, right? Not at all, Annalie. We, you know, we encourage folks, if you know nothing about the blind and visually community, like join us on a hike and just see, um, you know, you'll see for yourself what might be some of the barriers and challenges when it comes to accessing outdoor space or, or facilitating exercise activity you'll get that firsthand experience. In fact, we had a number of first time um, volunteers join us at our latest hike in Malibu. And um, they were just so inspired by the work that we're doing to create more accessible fitness um, services for the blind because they had no idea um, about the barriers and challenges that we face as the community. So that one time exposure to our program motivated them so much that we have four folks um, volunteering for us again next Saturday, uh, because next Saturday we'll be here in Los Angeles um, doing some restoration work. So not only are we um, engaging in the outdoor space, but we're helping to rebuild the space um, to, to make it more luscious and make it more pretty with you know, planting trees and planting shrubs and just trying to make trail spaces um, more, you know, more enjoyable. And so we'll have some yeah. volunteers that came from from uh, our hike last week that will be joining us again this week. So, um, yeah, oh, and nice. we encourage folks, come check us out one time. You'll I, I'm pretty sure you'll be motivated by the work that we're doing. Yeah, I think that's the thing. For me, the first time I was part of um, when I joined you guys on a, on a hike, it was um, before uh, me meeting my friend Jason, it was I, I never knew how to um, act or react in any situation. So as a sighted person, sometimes you kind of overcompensate and just mm -hmm. allowing yourself to learn. And it's okay. And I think what you'll see if you join any of these hikes or, or events, um, a non-sighted uh, or someone with visual impairment, they will guide you almost. Like they will let you know what to do and, and what not to do. So right. you don't have to be afraid or scared or think you're going to do anything wrong. I think the fact that you're offering up your time um, is a donation in itself. So 
Absolutely. Yeah. That is Before so, that's such a great point, Annalise. Can, if I may, the time that you give to us instrumental, because we recognize that as people, there are a million different things we could be doing with our time. And to spend a couple hours with Heart for Sight, helping to guide our visually impaired participants or members of our community, that we are just incredibly, incredibly great for the volunteer support because with again heart for side activities that we do it would be nearly nearly impossible so and only we got to thank you for for yours as well as all of the other volunteers <laughs> as well as all of the other volunteers who yeah. make heart for sight what it is Oh, no, not yeah. A, yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome being part of something bigger than yourself, right? So um, before we get into all the fun Giving Tuesday shenanigans, yeah. uh, let's just quickly check in with everybody. We've had a few people check in. Richard said, all right, everyone, let's contribute. 5K is not far away. Way to go, Joseph and Raquel, sending you financial love from Sacramento. Oh, thank nice. you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. That's our guy, Richard, right there, Richard Ueda. Richard, just really quickly, Richard came to, um, we had a hike and a beach day a couple months ago at Bolsa Chica. And I remember yeah. talking to Richard like a couple years ago about the ideas that we had for Hearts for Sight. And it's just amazing to see like three three years later, we had him over for our Bolsa Chica hike, and I was like, Richard, this is what we've envisioned when we spoke to you three years ago. So we're happy, to see, we're happy to see that this program is starting to come to fruition because now we're able to see the impact that we have in the community. And so, Richard, yeah. thank you, brother, for all the love and the support that you've shown us. We look forward to continuing to work with you. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you Amazing. so much, Richard. Um, someone else that just said hi, Rizal said hello, everyone watching from Kuwait. Wow! Uh, I know. Kuwait. We got everyone from everywhere. We're international, then, folks. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, Jess commented on Instagram. She said, "I've been on the bike rides a couple of times, and they are so much fun. Such a great workout and a healthy, fun way to meet other VIPs." So yeah. I believe Jess is also part of your guys' kind of community. So thanks yeah. Jess, for checking in. Jessie? Yeah. Jessie's a part of our board, mm -hmm. so we definitely want to give her some love and some shout out for her continuous support for our programs and her belief in our missions. Jessie, if you're hearing mm -hmm. us, special thank you from Raquel and I. Appreciate you. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, you guys should check out Jess. Jess um jesse's stuff on instagram as well she has done amazing stuff for the community um, to really raise awareness uh absolutely. for the VIP community so absolutely before, before we go into um giving tuesday um would you guys mind sharing a little bit of what you guys have been recently up to with cal state and i know yeah. there's some fun exciting nutrition things we want to mention too that's coming up right yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I'm happy to speak to them, Raquel. You can help me fill in, okay? Where um, Hearts for Sight is all as well. I think it yeah. is, you know, we think strongly that it's important to educate the sighted community about the challenges and barriers that we face when it comes to, you know, trying to improve our, our health. And so recently, so, uh, in, um, Earlier in the month, we went to Cal State LA. We were invited by Connie Wong, um, who is uh, who facilitates a exercise and rehabilitation program at Cal State LA's Mobility Center. And so Raquel, myself, and another one of our members, Alexis Chan, came to the uh, Mobility Center, and we just provided some perspectives um, in regards to what we face as a visually impaired community when it comes to, you know, trying to improve our health. Um, we talked about some of the barriers um, to uh, accessing facilities. Um, mm -hmm. We made a thorough assessment of the um, accessibility of the building, the mobility center, and we provided some recommendations on how 
um, these spaces can be built in a way that are much more accommodating for members in our community. For example, Raquel, who you know might have a, a challenge from getting from one part of the parking lot to a building so that she can go exercise. And so we provided mm -hmm. some perspective to the entire class. I believe there was about 16 to 18 um, students and students, two yes. uh, and two staffers. And, um, and we also provided some breakout rooms where we, uh, each one of us, Raquel, Alexis, and myself, we um, worked with about six to seven uh, students and we provided an additional perspective. perspective. I shared more information about how um, we can use descriptive language to help guide mm. people when it comes to um, providing exercise instruction. Um, and I think the work that we did was really, really well, well received by um, the students and the instructors. Um, and so, um, we had a couple volunteers come from that presentation. In fact, there was one volunteer. Um, her name was Leah, who came, and um, she was just an amazing, amazing help. So from that presentation, we were able to expose students uh, uh, about the challenges that we face in the community and how they, as individuals, people who are going to go into the fitness industry, people who are going to tap into someone with a visual impairment. Now you have some kind of perspective, although limited, but you have some perspective yeah. on how to work with persons who may be, uh, who might have vision loss. So that was an amazing, amazing mm -hmm. experience that we shared. Uh, Raquel, did you wanted to add anything to about that experience? No, it, it was just like uh, like you said, it was um, a good day for us to share with people. Um, I think these mm -hmm. students were learning to be uh, rehabilitation um, specialists or uh, yeah. kinesiology. I think that's yeah. that's uh, what they are are learning to. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a good day to share with them. I I myself actually I worked with them on the uh, what do you call that thing. A treadmill. The treadmill. <laughs> treadmill. treadmill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was showing them how a, a, a machine like that could be um, accessible or what they can do um, to make it accessible. You know, a lot of a lot of machines nowadays, when you go to a gym facility, they're all flat screen. Even just even mm. not exercise machine, even our home, our home <laughs> um, equipment, a lot of them are flat screen. So so for a blind person, um, uh, like me are like okay so how am I supposed to navigate this thing <laughs> so um, yeah. so I just showed them like what what possible things they can do like how they can mark some some of the buttons um, uh, to make it accessible right. or you know how they can guide somebody with some you know just things that you would see around the machine and 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 markers and landmarks for, for people to remember right. okay oh this is the on button this is the up and down or things like that so yeah yeah because i remember you telling me a very specific story of how you one time went to a gym and how initially people were kind of helpful but then as the yes. time goes by it's kind of they 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 are not as helpful anymore and they're not they, they prefer you bringing someone with you. So tell people a little bit about that barriers and because this is kind of how the ultimate goal of HFS is, is obviously we, what you guys want to um, uh, build this community center where people right. can come, VIP people can come and we're looking for support and we're looking for volunteers and partners to partner up to make this a reality. But yeah. this stems from a very specific barrier. And Raquel, you, I remember you telling me this story and I was, I was kind of frustrated for you when you told me this story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there is a gym facility, I'm not going to mention names, <laughs> that, we, <laughs> that we used to go to. And um, so, um, so actually, uh, you know, people there were, were very nice. And um, at, in the beginning, they were nice. And um, mm -hmm. a lot of people are always like that. When you go to a new place, they would mm -hmm. be helpful. And then eventually, after a couple of times of going, um, they started telling 
you know, I, you know, in the beginning, I should say, I'm sorry, they said, oh, yeah, sure, you know, come and we can help you, we can assist you, you know, find what you, help you find what you need to find, what machine you want to work on and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, after uh, two or three visits after that, they started saying, oh, you know, um, I think you should start bringing somebody who could assist you. Um, you know, our supervisor is, you know, in, in other words, they're saying that they, they're not there. They're not being paid to help mm. me. <laughs> and so, and it's so like, so what do I pay really, membership for? <laughs> I know. And, and the membership that I paid for, by the way, it, you know, I was allowed to, to bring somebody. And so I started bringing Joseph in and he and I started working out together and mm. so, like I said, a few times we're good, you know, we're doing our thing and blah, blah, blah. And then, like, maybe two months later, they started saying that, oh, you cannot come in here or you cannot have him come with you. I said, why not? He's my personal trainer. <laughs> and they yeah. said, no, but, you know, and, and so that's that's really, that really frustrated me. Um, mm. And I actually ended up cutting my <laughs> my membership there just because of that, because, you know, they were telling me at first, yeah, sure, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then afterwards, um, you, you know, they mind. said, I cannot do it anymore because Joseph mm. is not a staff in the facility and I cannot bring a personal trainer of my own. Like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, and I yes, think I that's, think. that's kind of like where, where, uh, the goal for HFS, um, and how this fundraiser, even though this fundraiser has specific goals to specific activities, but the ultimate goal here is to, to, uh, the vision and the mission of, of Hearts for Science to get that, um, community center built. And, um, yeah, this is. fundraiser is, is the step in the right direction. Right. So before we go into the Giving Tuesday fundraiser, we're almost on the top of the hour. So, um, and I know, so we want to be respectful of everyone's time. So we're going to uh, just quickly do one more, one last check-in with everyone on Facebook. Manuel, hello. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Hi. And then. I think I knew um, that person too. <laughs> <laughs> Raquel knows everyone. I love it. <laughs> um, and then um, J- uh, Joseph, um, how would you go into telling us a little bit about um, just the Giving Tuesday fundraiser, what your guys' plan is yeah. with the Giving Tuesday fundraiser? Yeah. And then mention a little, we, we forgot to talk about the yoga. I was like, oh, yeah. we need to talk oh, about yeah. yoga. So we'll, we'll, perfect we'll tap time into to that. talk about it. Yeah. We'll tap yeah. into that. So um, hashtag 5K for HFS. That is our little slow Giving Tuesday efforts. And um, we are raising 5K so that we can double the impact we have with our adaptive fitness um, activities for 2022. Um, we currently um, are looking to bowl our um, bike rides with Wheel Fund Rentals. Currently, we are able to provide about four to five bike rides per year, but we're Raquel can speak to this as well. Every single time we send out an email um, yes. for our for our bike rides, they fill up so so right away. Because of course, like who what who doesn't want to go ride bikes down Long Beach shoreline, or who doesn't want to go ride bikes in um, around the lakes here in Lake Balboa? And so these activities they fill up so quickly. And although it's a good problem to have because it shows that our activities are a hit, it's devastating for us because we we got to tell people, hey, we're at capacity. I'm sorry, <laughs> we can't we can't accommodate everybody, and we don't want to create additional barriers for people who are interested and in wanting to better their health and be in community. And so, with more financial support, folks we can double the number of bike rides that we do in 2022 so that we can increase the impact we have in our community. So our, our Giving Tuesday efforts are to support our bike rides, but also to your point, Anna Lee, our yoga practice. I mean, yoga is a universally accessible exercise for people, especially for members of our community. I mean, We've been providing yoga for over three years now, and 
Um, you know, before the pandemic, we were going to a community center and we were doing yoga, you know, pretty regularly, at least once a month. Um, and since the pandemic, we've had to transition our yoga practice um, to be held virtually. And through the support of a good, dear, dear friend of mine, I've known her for over 10 years, uh, my dear friend Adrian Johnson has been working with us for almost two years now, providing us with uh, her online yoga experience. And so at first we were able to do it really in the, during the heart of the pandemic where everybody was sort of sheltered at home. We were providing yoga classes at least once a week. Um, but since yeah. you know people are starting to go back to work, um, now our offerings are only available um, twice a month. And so we're looking for more financial support so that we can find um, an oppor- or find ways to compensate our yoga instructors uh, so that we can increase yeah. the frequency in which we're able to provide yoga. We would like to go back to providing yoga at least minimum once one time per week because we saw how beneficial it was to have consistency um, when it comes to yoga. So um, our Giving Mm -hmm. Tuesday efforts, the money that we raise will specifically go to our yoga practice to double the impact of our yoga and to double the impact of our bike rides in 2022 so Amazing. what do you think Did I answer that correctly <laughs> concise and also to help us provide uh, you know to help us create more adaptive fitness programs i still 100%. want to see zumba 100 yes I want to see zumba and dance is there any zumba yeah out there hey come <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so for everyone <laughs> Everyone that's checking in, if you know some people in the fitness industry that um, would like like to share their expertise, I think the key thing for for a lot of instructors is to have good verbal cues. And yes. I know you guys yes. have mentioned in the past how you know um, um, I think it's Adrian right from from yeah. um, yes. is offering yeah. you guys this yoga. It's yeah. like how good she is with her verbal cues because one, it's virtually. So, yes. you know, she has to be, yes. she, all she has is her words um, and uh, how she kind of used technology to assist people in, in correcting their postures and whatnot. And it's yes. not, I think sometimes people have a misconception about yoga and it can be all, you know, un- uncomfortable standing poses and yeah, it can yeah. get really <laughs> uncomfortable. And it, it's not about that. It's, there's so much mm. more to it. So, Really, really, Absolutely. if you are interested in, in that, check in with um, Raquel and yeah. Joseph. Send them an email our, to find out more about our yoga, yoga is Our yoga really tries to focus on helping folks improve their breath, their breathing, and improving posture. And Adrian, yeah. as you mentioned, Annalie, she is just extremely, extremely descriptive. But you know what? She never well, worked with the blind community in her entire yes, life. I was just going to say that, you know, she she's one of those persons who did not have any experience working with visually impaired people. And so we sort of trained her. <laughs> <laughs> we sort of trained her on how to tell us what to tell us, you know, how yeah. to be descriptive. So, yeah. And now, and now she's the gold standard when it comes to providing online yoga practice for people with vision loss. And so, Adrian, if you're hearing us, I'm sure you'll check us out um, in the recording. Heart for Sight gives you a million thanks um, for your continued support. Thank you so much. Thank you. All righty. So let's just do one last check in. I saw a few more comments come through. Um, Lee Marie says, love these activities, ready to donate. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, Leah. Leah, I think I pronounced that correctly. And then mm-hmm. Rochelle Houston says, thanks, Heart for Sight, for the All World right, Nutrition on. Program. I enjoyed myself the bike ride and the hiking. Lots of fun. I will be giving. Thank you so much, Rochelle. We appreciate you guys. Cool, cool, yeah, cool. We love our um, Rochelle Houston. She's a regular. Give a quick shout out, Anna Lee. I saw some. Some emails coming in with folks giving us some notes. Just real quickly, I want to give a huge shout out to my uh, former supervisor, my direct lead, um, Elizabeth Berger. I saw that she supported us. Elizabeth, if you're listening, thank you so much for your continued support. 
Um, really, truly appreciate you. I'll be touching base with you shortly, but thank you so much for your support. Amazing, amazing. So I think we are um, about at the, that time. Um, let's one more time give people just a, a, a summary of what uh, the foundation is about, where they can find links uh, before we say goodbye. And if you guys have any last thoughts, of course, you, you and, and Raquel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's start with how you can reach us. So, Annalie, you were able to put our email in the um, chat box or the comment box. So for those who um, have might have trouble accessing um, the chat, I'm going to share the email address. That is heartsforsight at gmail.com. I'll spell that out phonetically. That is H. E A R T S number four site S I G H T at gmail.com. Um, if you'd like to know more about the work that we do, if you want to be in the know with upcoming um, events and activities, please be sure to check out our Instagram and our Facebook pages. Um, and then also, if you're interested in signing up for our newsletter, that is probably the best way to learn a little bit more about the work and the impact that we have in our community, as well as being up to date with upcoming activities. Um, mm -hmm. And then Raquel, if folks want to reach you to learn more about um, specifics when it comes to um, anything about Hearts for Sight, particularly our um, activities, how could they reach you? You want to share that number call again? Me at, yes, you can call me at 818-457-1482. And you can call and text as well. All right. What was that number again? One more time. 818-457-1482. Excellent. And I believe those that information is in aux here. And Lee, we have um, on Facebook um in our uh on our page we have the donation links correct to our gofundme yeah, mm -hmm. or, excuse me, not a gofundme yeah, our also, Tuesday campaign uh, is up there <laughs> yeah <laughs> both, both <laughs> links are don't worry it's been an hour folks you know bear with us <laughs> it's so early here in california now um so we you can get both links we have our fundraiser there's two specific links one that takes you directly to our Facebook fundraiser. And mm -hmm. if you do not feel comfortable or you don't know of people who don't have Facebook, but you know they would like to donate, there's also the website link for Hearts for Sight where you can um, directly uh, donate via PayPal through the yep. website. Um, both mm -hmm. links are pinned to the top of the comment box on Facebook. And then if you're ch checking in on, on Instagram, um, because Instagram is obviously a little bit of a, a different beast. Uh, <laughs> it's a mobile app, so we can't put clickable links into the comment section. But go to the bio of Hearts for Sight and you will find the, the link right there to make a donation there as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. We appreciate all the support that we can get. Again, I'll say this a million times over. The support that we get from members of our community is what's allowed Hearts for Sight to be what it is today. And with your continued support, we'll be able to fulfill our true mission, which is to build that accessible health and wellness or uh, that accessible health and wellness facility for the blind and visually impaired so that we can continue to pursue physical, mental, and emotional wellness. So thank you all again, a million thanks for your support. And, um, you know, and uh, if you are able to also share, um, like and share our links, our mm -hmm. um, websites, please share them with folks that you know who are um, into health and wellness. Um, maybe you can lead us to our um, big donor. <laughs> that would help or partnership, our right? That partner, right? Yes, our partners, we're our, you know, our collaborators. We need all. We need all of their support. And I also, you know, want to mention that every donation, big or small, is a big thing for us. And like I mentioned in my post earlier, even if you donate ten dollars. 
And if there's a hundred of you, 200 of you, hey, we will get a thousand, two thousand dollars. So that's going to be a big thing for us. So huge <laughs> yeah. difference. Please support us. Yes, huge difference. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, by sharing course, if every person who, who's tuned in today, if you're catching the replay or you watch the live, if every person shares this once, um, the world that it's going to travel giving Tuesday, the giving season, it's, it is the time of giving. Um, so we want to encourage that, but more, mo most importantly, like both Raquel and Joseph said, we appreciate your guys' time for staying yes. live and, uh, check, listening to all the stuff we're talking about and, uh, asking <laughs> your questions. If you do catch the replay and you have more questions, Please drop them in the comment yeah. box. We will come back and, and look at the those comments. Send us a private message. Whatever it is um, you have on your mind that you want to share with us, please do. Uh, we love to hear from you guys. Absolutely. You. Absolutely. And last little quick shout out to our moderator, facilitator, Anna <laughs> Lee. Thank you so much. You uh, have oh, been instrumental. Awesome, we truly, truly appreciate your support. So this was a pretty seamless experience and kudos to you for helping to facilitate this. Oh, yeah, and course, shout out to all my friends that logged in. Um, I told yeah. them earlier, like, hey, logged in and they're from all over the world. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, for Raquel's, being here. Raquel's Miss International. <laughs> Citizen of the world. Right? Citizen of the world. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Well, wow. that's it, folks. We have a wonderful holiday season um, that's coming up, and we have a bunch of stuff that we're going to share this December with you guys of so things that's coming up. Again, this fundraiser is going to facilitate a lot of that. So um, share the love, share uh, the the post, share the live. Um, and thank you. Thank you for everyone that tuned in. Thank, thank you. you. Happy holidays, you. everyone. Happy holidays, everybody. For those Talk who celebrate, to. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>